Guys, so it is mid-March 2019 and we have had a super, super, super mild winter. Um, as a result, my compost is like completely full. Um, I've just been like getting rid of plants and all that kind of stuff. And so my compost looks like this. Still to the brim. So I need to make a new compost uh, bin and I am getting ready to make that right now. I went to Walmart or Home Depot actually and bought a, just a trash bin, a plain plastic trash bin. One of the big ones like you would put outside. And I'm gonna show you guys how to turn it into a composter like the one that I have over there so that you can compost at home and I'll go over some things that are very, very good and good uses for it as well. So stick around. All right, you guys. So I just realized that I did all that talking and I was not recording. So we're going to talk about making our compost bin. Uh, since my existing compost bin is basically completely full i would not i will not be able to get through this season uh using my existing compost bin and so it's time to make a new one i've had that one since i moved into my house which is about three years and i've never emptied it so what my plan is now is to use my new compost bin for this year and allow my old compost bin to just sort of settle and, um, you know, compost, finish off. And then I will take the compost out of that bin at the end of this year and use it in my garden. And then this one, the new one, will sit all of next year. Um, so that way it can finish and turn into compost. And I'll do the same thing and then I'll be able to alternate the two bins. So... Again, what you're gonna need is your 32 gallon multi-purpose container, also an outdoor garbage can. You're gonna make sure that you get the lid for it. You are going to need a drill, uh, and you can use a corded drill or cordless drill, whatever you have. And then you're going to need your drill bits. And we are going to use that drill bit on the far right. You wanna use the largest drill bit that you have for this project. Uh, and we are basically going to put holes. Uh, go all the way around it vertically, pretty much every few inches. I typically measure it. Um, you may not be able to see this on camera. I hope you can. But there are these little um, lines along the rim and those are basically the lines where the support uh, is underneath the rim of the garbage can and so I will measure along those and typically I'll do a row of holes every other or every third um, partition and or support partition and then I will also put holes in the top of the trash can lid and what the holes in the lid are going to allow you to do is control how much water and rainfall is getting into your composter. So if it's been raining a lot, you may not want more water in your composter. And in that case, what I typically do is I turn my lid this way. That way, more of the water is going to shed off the top of it. Only the water that is going directly through the holes is going to get into the composter. When it's been, let's say it's been a dry spell or it's, you know, here in the south, it's in the fall and it's drier out, I will turn the lid concaved so that every single drop of water that hits this lid goes through the composter. Uh, eventually, I'm going to have some fruit trees in my backyard, and what I really would like to have are standing composters next to each of the trees, so that way when the rainfall goes through the lid, it leaches out that wonderful compost tea uh, 
onto the trees, onto the base of the tree. So stick around and we're gonna continue with this and I'll come back once we um, are done with all the holes. So I'm back and this is what the composter looks like now. So we've drilled all the holes and we've also drilled the holes in the top. Because of the way that this top is um, already shaped, um, all of the water would run to this point anyway. And so I've just drilled holes in here so that way when it goes on top like this, the water will go down and then through the compost and it'll leach out the bottom into the soil. If it's been raining a lot, again, you just turn it this way and the water will drain off. It won't go through the holes. In addition, there are also holes in the bottom so that it doesn't get soggy or um, anaerobic. The last thing you want is for your composter to go anaerobic. Now, a lot of people who make composters like this will suggest that you put your stuff in there and then you roll it around once a week. Um, for me, that just got to be too much work. And after a while, it got really, really heavy uh, because I compost a lot of stuff. Um, and so I just leave mine. There are bugs that, you know, kind of live in there and do their thing and they break down everything. And then once everything is broken down, you can take that finished compost and use it in your yard. Um, so wanted to just kind of give you guys an update on what I'm doing this weekend. Uh, I just finished doing the garden beds in the front yard. This is what my garden beds in my backyard look like. That is paper. I always put down a layer of paper um, every spring just to keep weeds down. Uh, but this is um, blueberries here and there. I think these two blueberries in the front uh, ended up dying on me. Uh, this is a pomegranate. And so I'll have pomegranates this year. And then I have some herbs across the front. This is uh, rosemary. And that is oregano. And this is lemon thyme. This lemon thyme has been here for a year. Um, it came out of a very small pot that was maybe that big, maybe a four inch pot. And the rosemary when I got it was so, 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 so small. I mean, I'm sorry, the lemon thyme. All of these, the rosemary I got as a gift. Uh, one of my neighbors, Keith, gave me the rosemary. But the oregano I just got at um, my local Ace Hardware along with the lemon thyme. And uh, I got some regular thyme and some lavender which is over here and then I have another rosemary plant and I have two rosemaries because they were both quite small and I didn't want to um, over prune uh, the plant if I only had one I was scared that I was going to over prune it and kill it but because I have two I can you know take a piece off of this one for one meal take a piece off of the other one for another meal this is my lavender and it is starting to come back. You can see the branches, I thought they looked kind of dead, but there is life springing from these branches. That back there is bee balm. And uh, these are more blueberry bushes and another pomegranate. And as you guys can see, the pomegranates are budding out now. Uh, I need to go into these pomegranates and cut out some of these uh, branches that are crossed over so um, any type of bush you always want to make sure that you keep the center of your bush open and so any of these branches like this that cross into the center you want to make sure that you take those out this branch here as it crosses across the main branch there I'll take this out as well um, and it just makes it so that your bush is able to uh, self-sustained it, it doesn't um, mildew and things like that because airflow is better throughout the plant so I have to prune back these pomegranates 
these are my raspberries that I got at a big box store. I think it was Walmart and they were on sale for $2. I always go and get my bushes, my berries and things like that at the end of the season um, because I know that I can bring a plant back. And this is the prime example. Um, when I got these plants, they were literally just the canes. And now, not only do I have the raspberry um, leaves blooming off here, but because raspberries uh, spread underground, I actually have little raspberry plants popping up all over the place. Get in there, thorns and all. My raspberries are popping up all over. And so I'm gonna go through here next and pull some of these weeds out of here. Unfortunately, I can't do my little trick on this bed because I'm scared that I'll cover the raspberries. So I have to go through here and pull all my weeds out by hand. But that's why you gotta get out and start early. And then these are garlic plants that I set in here last year. I always put gar garlic in with my blueberries uh, just because there's space available. So blueberries and raspberries. Uh, and then this is my fig, which I need to prune back because I need to prune it to just two or three main stalks. If you can see this, this stalk is the tallest and I cut it off here last year so that it will branch out on the sides. Um, I want my figs to have a more tree-like structure rather than a bush structure. So I'm gonna come in here and cut all of these smaller um, trunks out of here. And I probably will leave this tall one and then this one here and then this one back here. Um, and potentially even this one over here, it's far enough away from the other ones that I could leave that one in there. So I wanna have just a really nice tree-like uh, setup to my figs. I don't want them to kind of be all over the place. I wanna kind of know where to look for them. Uh, and it's just a much nicer look when you have a fig tree that has a tree uh, scape to it. This down here is mint and I just wanted to go into this for just a second. Uh, I had a plant, a mint plant that was potted in one of those ceramic pots that you can plant like four things in it in the same pot. It's sort of like a, a vase with holes on the side of it. And I went to go and pull some of the plants out of there and the vase broke. I took the entire vase and threw it on the ground at the base of the fig tree that I had planted earlier that year. Well, the mint took hold and it started over there. And then now the mint has just taken over this area here. And I am probably gonna have more mint than I know what to do with. But luckily, I love a good mixed drink and I love a good mojito. So we will, uh, you know, we'll mint everything this year. And then it's also actually coming up in the yard. And that's actually really cool because now when I get my grass cut, the yard will smell like fresh cut mint for a couple of days. So that's my little update. The sun is uh, behind me now and uh, getting ready to go back in the house, get my pruners and come back out here and prune up these pomegranates. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna take this multi-tool, it's got the rake and the um, spade on the other side. And because the ground in the raised bed is so soft, because I don't ever step on it, uh, I don't ever step in the bed, 
foot the, the ground stays really soft I can really just get in here and pull up all of these roots from last year's plants and weeds that I don't need in here and look at this in just one year that this has been here I just put this raised bed in last spring I've already got wonderful earthworms in here I mean there's just a ton of them here's another one and this is what you want this is how you know that your raised beds are thriving and doing well when you have earthworms breaking down the stuff that doesn't need to be in there so I'll be back shortly with an update and uh, stay tuned okay so step one is done this bed about mm, 20 minutes ago looked like that one so I went through with my um, hand tiller and turned everything over and took out all of the rooted weeds I still have a couple more left on the top that I just need to get out uh, you don't want to leave anything in the bed that still has roots on it uh, especially not if it has roots and leaves because it will come back and to make sure and to help with this we're going to smooth this all over so everything is nice and flat and then I'm going to cover it with paper um, and what will happen is is that I will come back over this in a few days and add some more amendments to it and under the paper and the amendments uh, my animals my little bugs are gonna go to work to break down all of those loose roots before they can turn into new weeds so all of my earthworms earwigs all of those things are going to be under the ground working to prevent new weeds from popping up and then when I get ready to plant because this paper is thin I'll be able to just tear a small hole through the paper and pop my new seedlings in or small plants so I'm gonna get this paper down and I will be back so I am in the yard as you guys know I just finished the first garden bed and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like so this is again what the garden bed looked like before just full of these little weeds that have come up over the course of the winter we had a really mild winter here in Georgia so um, the weeds never really had um, you know like a die-off period it just was like hmm, I stopped kind of weeding and doing stuff in the yard and the weeds decided to take over but again luckily my soil here is super super loose and super soft I can just go in with a hand tiller and uh, get all of the weeds out now I'm going to show you guys what the other side looks like that I finished this side I've taken all of the weeds out used the hand tiller to loosen them up and then taken all of the weeds and roots out and um, I've covered it with a layer of paper I'm gonna come back over it and cover it with um, you know more topsoil and um, soil amendments but the paper is going to help to keep new weeds from springing up um, before I can get my plants in here uh, for the new season. So this is what it looks like. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get to this next bed and get this all squared away and covered. There's three beds in the front until I put in the new ones. And um, I'm going to get these taken care of and covered and I'll come back when it's all done.